I hope that you watched the previous three videos on limits. All of those videos have something in common, which is that the limits we were finding were defined. We got an answer. It either existed or it didn't exist. It went to a number or it went to infinity, but we could figure out what the answer was. In this video, we're gonna talk about undefined quantities. For an undefined quantity, they give absolutely no information about what the answer is. You don't know when you find an undefined quantity, does it exist? Does it not exist? Does it go to infinity? Does it go to two? You have no idea when you find an undefined quantity. Just a quick little overview. What is a defined quantity? Certainly a finite number. Limits that go to infinity, they do not exist. Those are defined as well because you know, yes, this limit does not exist. Yes, this limit does exist. Those are the situations that are defined. Other types of quantities that you might encounter, remember these arrows mean the word approaching. So if you have a numerator approaching one and a denominator approaching zero from the right with positive numbers, then that'll go to positive infinity. If you have the numerator approaching one and the denominator approaching zero with negative numbers, that'll go to negative infinity. And similar vice versa, one over infinity goes zero. Here's another type of strange quantity you might come across. The numerator approaches zero and the denominator approaches infinity. Here's the strategy, is that you're gonna take whatever's in the numerator and move it off to the side so that you have a multiplication times zero, and then you'll be left with one over infinity, which also goes to zero, and then you have zero times zero, which approaches zero. Similar idea for infinity over zero is that you can separate out the numerator off to the side and get one over zero goes to infinity, and then infinity times infinity goes to infinity. Okay, you actually have to show this and we're going to do some examples in class as well. Undefined quantities include zero over zero, infinity over infinity, infinity minus infinity, and infinity times zero. The most common type of mistake you see with these is students canceling zero divided by zero cancels to give me one or something like that, or canceling the infinities or something like that. The problem with it with these quantities is that they don't have any meaning. Infinity divided by infinity doesn't make any sense. These are also known as nonsense. No information. Undefined. If you encounter any of these nonsense quantities, what you have to do is use algebra. Once you get stuff to cancel out, then you reevaluate the limit and see if you get an answer. If you still get an undefined quantity, then you have to redo more algebra, get more stuff to cancel out, and then reevaluate the limit, okay? You keep doing this process until you get something that actually makes sense. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's actually do an example where we encounter an undefined quantity. Quantity. Let's check it out. Um, let's try our plugging in thing that we did in the previous video and we're going to talk about why that doesn't work here. You cannot just plug in zero. Well, why the heck not? If I plug in zero here, I'm going to get two times zero plus three squared. That's nine minus nine and the numerator approaches zero. Similarly, if x approaches zero, then the denominator approaches zero. Notice that we're getting zero divided by zero, which is an undefined quantity. This does doesn't make any sense. It gives us no information. Maybe the answer is infinity. Maybe it's zero. Maybe it's 12. We have no idea when we come across an undefined quantity. So what do we do? We do algebra, love algebra. We foil stuff. And the magic of foiling is that once we foil this, the nine and the nine cancel. Ooh, isn't that nice? Some stuff canceled out. Let me try it again. If x approaches zero, we've got the denominator still approaching zero and the numerator zero plus zero gives us zero as well. Again, we have an undefined quantity of zero divided by zero. We need to keep going with the algebra. Of course, in this quantity here after the nines cancel, now I can cancel an x in every single term. And I've got my quantity on the next line here, which is four x plus 12 divided by one. Now let's plug an x equals zero. Oh, there we go. There's the answer. The answer is 12. Magic. Okay, the answer is not zero over zero. That doesn't make any sense. The answer is 12. And the only way we could figure that out is by 
by doing the algebra. I really wanted to do this example because it's an algebra trick that people often forget. First, let's evaluate the limit and see what's going on here. If x is approaching infinity, the square root of very large numbers is very large. So this is going to infinity and this is going to infinity. And we essentially get infinity minus infinity. Remember from the previous slide, that is an undefined quantity. This makes no sense. I have no idea what this even means. It's nonsense. It gives no information. This is kind of a tricky little thing. You might remember it from algebra, which is to multiply times the conjugate. We're going to multiply times square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x. Right? That quantity divided by itself so that we don't change the problem. We do the same thing in the numerator as we do in the denominator. Now we got to do out the algebra, and so we are multiplying the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. We have some terms which cancel out. After the cancellations, we have 1 divided by square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x. Let's try taking the limit as x goes to infinity now. We get infinity plus infinity in the denominator. Infinity plus infinity is perfectly well defined. Big numbers plus big numbers give you big numbers, and the numerator is just approaching 1. So we've got 1 over infinity here, which goes to 0, and the answer is 0. So remember, every time you encounter an undefined quantity, what that means is that you have no information about whether it exists or it doesn't exist, what the value of the limit is. Undefined quantities make no sense. You're going to be using basic algebra. Anything that you learned in algebra is valid here. Foiling, canceling, simplifying, maybe factoring something, getting something to cancel out, multiplying by the conjugate like we did in the previous example, right? Any valid algebra that you learned in a previous class that you know is a valid algebra rule where you can get things to cancel out and simplify, this is what you're going to be doing anytime you encounter one of these undefined quantities. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online and we'll see you in class soon.